The world map that you've looked at your entire life is lying to you. The Mercator projection map created by a cartographer and Flemish geographer named Geratus Mercator has wrong representations of four factors. Shape and size distortions, meridians and parallels, area distortions, and last navigation and visualization. Let's start with the shape and size distortion first. Although we do agree that the map represents the accurate shape of each country over there, but many countries are squished too much, while others are expanded exponentially. Created to help sailors, it has helped many individuals over the years, but we cannot deny its immense flaws. So even if it provides the correct response to each country's direction ability, it is far from the truth. We all agree that it's not their fault. Our planet is not flat. Sorry to all the flat earthers, but the truth is the truth. Our planet is a sphere with a flat bottom and top surfaces, as well as a bud-shaped structure on its equator. As a result, it is impossible to make a three-dimensional object appear in two dimensions without displacement. Do you not believe us? Draw a map on a little ball and tear it out. Now try to sketch the map while keeping each component in mind, as well as the longitude and latitude lines. Have we made our point? Let us now explain why it is so significant. According to the Axbomb.com website, when drawing straight lines between countries, they would in reality be curved, and seemingly curved lines can be mostly straight. Confused? You see, if you begin sailing from Son Miami, Balakistan, Pakistan, you will not come across any landmass for the following 32,089.7 kilometers. This voyage will take passengers between Africa and Madagascar and Antarctica and Tierra de Fuego, South America. After cruising in a straight line, you'll arrive in Russia's Karakski district of Kamkacha Krai. If you plot both of these sites on a rectangular map, you'll notice that you must cross a lot of countries before you get to Russia. However, this is not the case. This concept was first published by a Reddit user named Patrick Anderson in 2021. It was then confirmed by researchers named Kushal Makjeri and Rohan Kabushkar six years later. Let's now discuss the area distortions. On our map, Africa appears significantly smaller than the United States. However, it is larger than the United States, China, and even Canada put together. Even if Greenland appears to be the same size as Africa, it is 14 times smaller. In a nutshell, the further you walk away from the equator, the more the locations will appear different. And if you believe it's only affecting people's geographical knowledge, you are mistaken. According to psychologists, the size disparity has an important impact on the way people think. For them, Western countries that appear larger will be more important than those that appear incredibly small. Other projection maps have been created to compensate for the distortions, but they still have significant limitations. The Mercator map you see is created using a projection method. Wrap a rectangular cylinder or even a chart around a sphere and project each point of the sphere onto your chart. When you open it, you'll see a world map. Even though the land masses appear to be diverse, the creator focused on one major concept. Mercator understood how a sailor navigated using a compass, so he divided the entire globe into grids and considered the angular location of each point about the adjacent country. If a sailor sails from Portugal to Virginia, it'll use an angle of 190 degrees. As a result, using the Mercator map is beneficial to people. Therefore, despite taking into account angular projections, the world map continues to show area distortion. Next, let's look at another reason why it's incorrect, meridians and parallels. You see, the meridian lines are the lines that extend over our planet's surface from north to south. When we map them on a globe, each meridian is half the length of the Earth's circumference apart from its neighboring meridian. They are quite equally spaced, and the parallel lines decrease shorter near the poles. However, when it comes to the rectangular map, these lines never converge in the first place and get significantly larger towards the pole. Even though Robinson's projection, also known as the Mulweedy projection, attempts to reduce this distortion in the form of a global map, no one can eliminate it on a two-dimensional surface. The final distinction is between navigation and visualization. We required something convenient for measuring distances at one place where the global representation of our world map is used for long-distance air travel or even navigation in the polar zone. This is why, even though there are discrepancies on the rectangular map, it provides a transparent aspect in planning routes. Because their straight lines cosmically mimic the actual routes of our Earth's curving surface, they are ideal for use in road navigation apps. 
Now that we've highlighted the four primary differences, as well as why they exist in the first place, let's tell you about something you might not be aware of. Our geography, you see, has undergone several alterations and improvements. Antarctica, for example, had not even been found when the map was initially presented to the world. Even though it's been included, the map has not yet been fully updated because the continent is not as large as it appears in the illustration. Consider the Indian state of Kashmir. There are some parts of it which are currently controlled by countries such as Pakistan and China. However, it is still visible on the global map, despite the changes that have occurred. Other projections exist that attempt to compensate for the lack of Mercator's projection. The National Geographic Society selected another map, Winkle Triple Projection, which was released in 1921. Even though this map did not remove the distortion of flat maps in terms of size, form, or direction, it did try to minimize it as much as possible. However, according to live science, this picture has issues with distortion, particularly regarding the Pacific Ocean, which looks vaster on this map than it is in reality. In the 1970s and 80s, there was another option known as the Gall Peters projection, in which countries were given equal areas on the map relative to each other. Now, let us tell you what Matthew Edney, professor of history and geography at the University of Southern Maine, exclusively told live science. My academic grandfather, Arthur Robinson, said it made the continents look like long underwear hung on a line to dry. The Gall Peters map also features the most deformed land masses, as they seem stretched vertically at the equator and horizontally at the poles. So even though the inventor was particularly concerned about the correct size, he ended up losing the correct shape of the countries depicted on the map. Then there's the orthograph projection, which was invented in 1999 by Japanese architect Hajami Narukawa. He even won a good design award for his outstanding work. This map attempted to eliminate shape distortion while also improving size accuracy. According to Orthograph.com, this map was constructed by splitting our planet's spherical surface into 96 triangles and then transferring it to a tetrahedron while keeping the area's proportions. Finally, it spread into a rectangle. Sounds like a problem-solving situation, right? But once again, it has its limitations. Although it is one of the best attempts to construct an extremely accurate map, it still has significant distortions in areas such as Brazil and Australia. As per live science, Orthograph map is still a proprietary model, and its equations have not been released or published, so it cannot easily be reproduced or used in GIS software. But then there's the map projection introduced in 2021 which has been deemed more accurate than any previous map ever introduced. It depicts two pancake-style maps that must be seen side by side or nearly in a row to be understood. In a nutshell, you can't use a three-dimensional projection to appropriately portray in a two-dimensional flat map. What indicators do you want to add to the globe map now that we've shown you the transparent reality of it? Also, when did you discover this truth? Feel free to leave your response in the comments area. If you enjoy our videos, consider sharing them and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned.